My name is Squiggly Peter. I love my fish and chips. I love that salt and vinegar as it trickles down my lips. When I'm out there pirating my pencil in my hand, I draw whatever I want to draw, or whatever comes to hand. Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, 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 the pirate. Well, what have we got today? Okay, um, I've got a little demo, painting demo. Let me just put this away a minute. Um, right, in which I'm going to be adding a character to this scene. Now, this is Mostyn Square in Parkgate, and the Queen has turned up. Um, now, I won't say exactly what's happening, you'll probably guess. But um, I thought, to accompany the Queen, I'd better have some other royal characters, so... Uh, Today we're going to be having Prince Charles around. This little demo I started painting, I, I painted most of this the other day, but I thought to myself, I was painting the corgis this morning, I thought, oh, this would be nice to share with everyone, just to, you know, show you what goes into these paintings and so on. Um, it's been a lot of work, and thank you so much for everyone who's uh, kindly supporting me and um, giving some great enthusiasm, encouragement and so on. It really, really helps to keep going, because, you know, writing a book of this length is sometimes a torturous um, process. Sometimes you think, oh, this is great, it's going to be fantastic. And other times you think, oh dear, I'm not sure if it's any good at all. Anyway, it really is hugely helpful when you get people encouraging you and, um, you know, liking the stuff. So, now, um, www.squigglypeat.co.uk, go and sign up for the newsletter there if you haven't already. Uh, that's www.squigglypeat, S-Q-U-I-G-G-L-Y, Pete, P-E-T-E, dot co dot U-K. Um, and you'll be alerted when the book is finished, hopefully a few weeks' time. Anyway, today, a little bit about corgis and stuff. Um, there are some long, boring sort of painting bits. You can skip those. But um, please take a look towards the end. There's some interesting things. There's a folder on my computer which is full of hundreds and hundreds of the drawings I've done for this so far. And um, I just flipped through a few of those, but it's really fascinating. I mean, it's fascinating for, mis for myself because sometimes I draw these things and it takes hours, and then you do another one, you do another one, you get they all get stacked away, and you forget you've done them. And then when you look at them, you think, hmm, they're quite charming. Anyway, um, so there's a little bit on that, and then towards the end of the video, um, I'm showing you how I scan the pictures in and I'm into the actual finished pages. Um, and hopefully that'll give you some insight into what goes into... Uh, you know, self-publishing a book such as this. Um, and I'm going to be doing some more of these videos um, with a view to basically just giving people an insight into what goes into it. You know, it's all very well posting some pictures and stuff and saying, oh, here, it's done, here's the finished book. You know, if you knew what went into it, especially for children watching with parents to see, you know, how a book gets put together. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, so I'll probably be uploading this to YouTube as well. And if you go there and subscribe, then every time I do a new one, you'll be notified. Right, well, enjoy this bit of uh, painting and the corgis. And um, once again, thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, sorry, th th there's more following right now. Okay, enjoy. Oh, no, it's Prince Charles. Where's Squiggly Peter? Ha, ha yes, this is part of the Squiggly Peter story. I'll explain everything in a minute. Now, I thought today, as we've got some lovely bright daylight sunshine streaming in the windows it's good uh, uh, good light for making videos and stuff which normally are problematic with artificial lighting anyway I'm rambling already right so today I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of a little bit of painting technique but I thought I'd bring you up to date also with some of the things going on in the book now as you know this project's been going on for a year well over and I've been saying to people oh it's nearly ready it's nearly ready but there is an awful amount of work in this and in fact it's turned into what should have been quite a simple children's story into quite an epic of a book. Uh, I'll explain what Prince Charles has got to do with it in a minute. Um, I'll just give you a little, pre a little preview of the actual book. Uh, you've probably been wondering what it's like. Now, I've been into some schools and done school visits and taken this along, and the children have gone, wow, and they love it, especially when I pull the whole thing out because it's just made like a accordion uh, thing. This is my um, actual working copy, and what I do is I do all the paintings and drawings, scan them, and then put the picture together in Photoshop. Now, a picture like this has probably got about 20 individual paintings in it, uh, inking, drawing, sketching, you name it. From the original sketches, then through to inking, you can see a little bit of this remaining here, uncoloured, um, through to the, pa the painting. I think I did a painting of the ship, then I did a painting of Squiggly Pete here, 
fragmenting of sharks. These are all done individually and merged together into one double page spread. And if you're interested uh, in the technical aspects, um, I'm going to be producing a, uh, an episode of these videos in which I'm showing you how I do that in Photoshop, which is a very interesting thing to know. Um, but also if you're encouraging your children to get into the technology and things, um, you know, I can't, I, I, as I said to my own daughters growing up, I can't emphasize how useful a tool Photoshop is for general sort of life skill. You know, being able to use Photoshop is great. Um, you know, it's been around decades and it's not going to go away. So it's a very useful software tool. And I'll be doing more on that at some point. But anyway, um, so the page on the book size I'm designing for is it's just under A3. Um, so I print, I've got a big A3 printer. So when I've done all the pictures and put them together in Photoshop, I print them out on this nice semi-glossy paper and then stick them all together. So there's one of the first pictures where, in which Squiggly Pete is drawing his own boat. Hope he doesn't fall off and get eaten by the shark. Uh, he's also drawing some of the animals uh, and creatures that appear later. Uh, you see, uh, he's drawing a gull. As you can see, he's not very really good at that. But there you go. Uh, <clears throat> he's drawn his own parrot, look. Right, so there he is in one of the first pages. And of course, as you know, he goes on a little jaunt and turns up in Parkgate. There it is, the boathouse restaurant. Many of you will know that well. And you can see the hills of Wales in the background here and off to the sea. And we've got our local geese and some seagulls. And this is the local variety. Where I used to live in Ramsgate, we had the uh, white-headed, uh, you know, normal gulls. Here we've got the sort of black-headed ones. I did know the name of those, but I've forgotten temporarily. Um, so anyway, Squiggy Pete turns and here he's starting to draw people and fish and chips, of course. He's, he's come in search of the fish and chips. And he tells us in this couple of pages how much he loves the fish and chips. There we are. He is splashing his vinegar around. And um, there's his little boat in which he sails off and comes to Parkgate and turns up. It comes up the little slipway there when the water, uh, this is a little sort of flashback to the days when the water used to come right up to the slipway, uh, I believe, from old photos. As you can see the custom house on the side here. This is where the cat makes his appearance. I, that's just a little squiggly sketch. As I said, this is my working copy of the book, so it's full of annotations. And on the back of these pages, I write things that I've still got to finish off. Like, here we are. Edge of the furthest house, we find that. Um, to do Lucy with a telescope, that sort of business. I scribble things on so I can remember where I'm going with this. Right, so where are we? Fish and chips uh, turns up in Parkgate. There are some ghost ships there in the background. Uh, he comes to the chip shop and the chip shop's closed. Oh no, he says, what am I going to do with my 50 quid? I'm starving. He thinks about making his own chip making machine. As Lucy and Jack look a bit bemused by this idea. Uh, this is chips, some nice and fresh, some soggy. Uh, there is um, outside the Elephant Lounge Cafe, and uh, people are throwing chips and so on. There's a seagull sort of fluttering around, and uh, the lady from the council turns up. Oh dear, because of this uh, COVID outbreak thing, we've got to shut the chip shop down because people are being too friendly and sitting too close, enjoying their chips on the wall. So I'm afraid we have to shut down the chip shop. Um, and this, the whole idea, uh, the whole uh, idea for this book came from the day when the lovely people at the chip shop came along and actually said, um, came knocking on the door and gave us some free fish and chips uh, because they said they had to close down. So everything had to be fried up and sorted out. So that was great. Free fish and chips. I love that. Um, anyway, what are we going to eat? said Lucy and Jack. We're starving. No fish and chips. We'll have to go get something else. Then Pete starts reminiscing about the mushy pea machine that the shop is reputed to have. And there it is, the great mushy pea machine. Oh, goodness me. Look at that. Yes. Right. Um, oh, there's the cat. He comes jumping in the window. Now watch out for the cat. As I said, he turns up... <clears throat> mysteriously on page six seven eight i believe it is here page eight he turns up mysteriously we don't know who this cat is okay i'll let you know sometime but there he is and he look he jumps in he jumps in through the window there's the uh 
people who run the chip shop. He's looking after the mushy pea machine. Here's a noise in the background. What's that? Where's that cat going? Anyway, Jack's looking pretty miserable because by now he hasn't had anything to eat. And Pete says, ah, I can draw some biscuits if you like. Or I can draw some stew. There he is, cooking his stew. No thanks, says Jack. I've heard about your stew. It's all full of seaweed, made out of seaweed and kelp. What's going on in the chip shop? My goodness, look at this. It's building up mushy peas and there's a tra cat trapped below. And then we have a little flashback where the story tells about how uh, the chap who runs the chip shop loves to go sailing. And he was obviously thinking about taking his little boat. Do you recognise the boat? I think he's renovated it. Uh, it's sailing. And he's thinking about that. And he's left the mushy pea machine on by accident. Well, of course, there's a limiter thing which should stop the thing, you know, operating but the naughty cat uh, done it looks like he's broken the limiter just redo a little bit but today there was obviously something qu ah. now this mushy machine had a limiter thing to determine just when it should stop to deploy in the case of emergency and to ensure that they waste not a drop but today there was obviously something quite wrong and i tell you this wasn't a joke you remember i mentioned that limiter thing well that limiter thing it was broke and the mushy machine kept on chugging and churning and puffing and pounding all night as the big squashy boot turned the peas into pulp it was quite an incredible sight with a thud and a thump and a pull on the pump and a tweak of this little green wire with each thunderous stroke and the limiter broke all the peas piled up higher and higher so there's a cat he's sneaked in he's messing around with the limiter machine yes stop right mushy peas are building up. I'll just flip through this quickly because obviously I can't give you a full update. Oh, there's a big explosion. Mushy peas everywhere. Uh, in the street. Oh, no, run for it. We have the Red Lion pub here and a few other houses and things. The old key restaurant down at the end there. Look at the mushy peas flowing down. Now, um, one of the things I like to include in my books is little references to other things that aren't in the story. Um, but have some sort of meaning. Uh, and you, many of you from Parkgate and Nest and that sort of area will know that last summer uh, someone parked the car up here, forgot to put the handbrake on, <laughs> rolled down the hill, half over the seawall and ended up in the marsh. Um, blue, I can't remember what it's called, that car, but uh, anyway. Um, so there it is. Obviously skidded, in my story, skidded through the mushy peas, you see. And in this scene, he gets gradually buried. So Pete draws some characters. He says, here, I have some surfers. Got to enjoy this lovely mushy pea mess. And Lucy's going, what's going on? It's not a school outing, you know. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist, giggled Pete. When I saw this phenomenal scene, I just had to draw people in various colours to go with the glorious green. There we are. See, so she's got very orangey hair and purple to go with the green here. The cat's taken a liking to Lucy. Probably because she rescued him, see. She rescued him from the mushy peas. Anyway, so, uh, oh no, the lady from the council's turned up again, spoiling the fun. But the fun had to stop as things generally do. When they get just a bit out of hand, they had come here to try out those great fish and chips, but things hadn't gone quite as they'd planned. Also now there appeared someone we've seen before from the council department. Yes, and she read out the rules as she made it quite clear that someone should clean up this mess. Right, uh, as you can see, it's littered with uh, my annotations because... Um, you see, I drew the rats there, first of all, and I had the idea later. I thought, oh, maybe I'll give them surfboards as to join in the fun. So, as I said, this is my working copy. They go down the road. Uh, you can see the mushy peas creeping up Station Road here. Cat's sneaking off. He looks a bit guilty. Yes, he should be. Um, now, the BBC News crew turn up. I've got to draw that at some point. There they are, filming the mushy peas, because that's relevant to the next pages so they are off down old key lane looking for somewhere to camp out for the night squeaky pete's running along drawing cooking utensils as he goes you'll need those as uh, jack they're going to cook their dinner and they are camping out in a little location which some of you may spot um i believe it used to be there used to be an old key there when the water came up to here and boats used to dock alongside this um, the history of uh, the area is fascinating well any area it's always fascinating to learn the history and I, I learned a little bit of history about this place but do you know what I'd like to include that scene you can actually walk there go there stand there hold the book up and say oh yeah that's, that's blah 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 that's blah 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 let's park gate off to the 
off in the distance over here. Big glow of green mushy peas and whales in the darkness by the moonlight. Right, so there we go. Uh, it doesn't look like the rats are enjoying Squiggly Pete's music. And you can see that from up in space, there's a, a certain spaceman hanging around in space. And here they are. And Pete's, while well, they're all getting to sleep, Pete's scribbling something. I wonder what he's scribbling. Boris Johnson, of course, is watching this on television. Let me see, this is how Boris and the Queen get involved. Uh, here you are. So there's the Queen looking down. And uh, here's Boris going, oh, look at that. I wonder what's going on in Parkgate. Maybe I should get down there. Photo opportunity, hey? <laughs> Parkgate in peril. Mushy peas in the Gulf of the Village. Hmm, I should go and have a look at this. So off he goes on his bike. Leaves uh, his son Wilfred with Kerry outside number 10. Ah, his bike isn't finished. He's only got one wheel. Looks like the wheels are coming off, Boris. Hmm. Anyway, some of the other things I like to include in this are sort of celebration of things British. Obviously, we've got the British flag here. Uh, we've got the European flag. Uh, won't say anything about that. Of course, the Spitfire, iconic British manufacturing machine design technology. Um, and of course, I've got someone here. You might have to do a bit of research yourself to find out that who that is. But that's someone very important to me. Uh, without whom, I believe, the Industrial Revolution wouldn't have happened. Anyway, I'll leave that for you to look up. Of course, we've got a little reference to Peppa Pig here. Uh, Boris, very fond of Peppa Pig. And uh, there we go. So off he goes. Right, back at the camp. They wake up in the morning, start clearing up. Oh, see, must take away all your litter. Um, and uh, Pete shows them what he's drawn. Look, he says, I've drawn this thing. Now, this is going to help clear up the mushy peas. What on earth is that? Let's have a look over the page. See me. Here we go. He shakes the paper and off it comes. Oh, it's come to life. And there it is running around. It starts to live and breathe and it grows to an enormous size. Oh, don't worry, said Peter. Uh, I've made one just like this before. Only this one is better and slightly more tame. It's unlikely to bite us, I'm sure. Oh, oh he's captured one of the rats. The other one's looking at Right, the other one's down here, looking on. Right, so there we go, there's the mushy pea machine, uh, the mushy pea machine, the mushy pea capture machine, like a giant hoover. There it is outside the Wirral Country Park, making its way down into Parkgate. Leston, uh, Boris has turned up. Oh, he says, uh, when all's said and done, when you don't have a plan, you need a great man, and I'm telling you I'm the one. Hmm, full of confidence. Um, these characters, just to give you a little teaser, they turn up in another of my books, which is coming out later in the year. I won't say anything more about that for the moment. Some people know. <laughs> and there they are outside the ice cream shop. Of course, the mushy peas have gone everywhere. And the ice cream shop owners have made the most of this. They've got a new peas and mint flavour and a mushy pea flavour over here. And there we go. And the mushy pea machine, the Hoover machine goes to work, sucks up the mushy peas and so on. Anyway, that brings us up to date with what's going on in this um, this picture with Prince Charles. Now in the next scene, there's one of my working pages. Um, this is outside uh, Mostyn, this is Mostyn Square. Salty's there, little church. Um, basically, out of nowhere the Queen pops up and says, oh well done Squiggly Pete, you've done very well. Uh, so rise Squiggly Peter, you've done a great job. Yeah, let me just Here's one of my pencil sketches for it. Let me see what the Queen says. So, arise, Squiggly Peter. You've done a great job. Here's a medal for each of your crew. You've done a great deed, for we may have all drowned, said the Queen, if it wasn't for you. Anyway, so there we have a uh, little sketch. And I thought, ah, Queen won't just turn up on her own. She brings an entourage of people. One of them is Prince Charles. Well, he's looking after the corgis. Aha! I'll just show you a couple of the other pictures before the video runs out. Here's some of the other pictures I've done. As you can see, there's Lucy in the background wrestling with the machine. I very often draw two versions of a very similar image, and then in Photoshop I'll use the bits and pieces I want. For example, I just did this sketch quickly, and Lucy's legs look a bit odd in this one. So I've used the legs from this one and the top half of that one, merged them together. I know it's cheating a bit, but that's, a, that's just a bit of fun, isn't it? There we go, so there's Lucy, and oh, there's some of the rats from the previous page. Oh, he's fallen down, splosh, into the marsh. 
There's another one dangling from the rope there. There's Jack looking pleased with his medal. That's the actual drawing, which is then scanned in Photoshop and popped in here. As you can see, some of the paintings, are, they're usually a little bit larger than they end up on the page, but that gives me the ability to size them uh, to the size I want. And uh, that's Boris and a chap called Jack running along. Boris is looking a bit frantic by now. Maybe he's uh, losing control of the situation. Oh, and there's the there's the finished drawing painting of the machine itself. Looking a bit sickly because it's just filled up with all the mushy peas. Anyway, don't want to go on too long. Back to Prince Charles. I thought with the little demonstration today I'm going to do in a few minutes, I'm just going to show you how I do some corgis. Now, these ones are already inked in, so I've, I've done the ink. And to be quite honest, once you've worked out how to do watercolours and you have all your methods and stuff, it's like painting by numbers. But I thought I'd just share this with you today. Here's one I did earlier, and um, that's what I'm going to reproduce uh, right now and show you. I like to do these little things. And I make a little note of which colours I've used for my own reference in future. So let's see. If I pop that up there another scrap of watercolour paper. I'm using Daler and Brownie, 140 pounds, that's a pounds weight, uh, that's 300 GSM hot pressed paper. I usually use uh, some Cuthbert's Mill Bockingford as well, um, but they're both very, very similar. Okay, so let's not take too long about this. I think my hard drive's filling up. Right, so now I've got over here some ink in this little receptacle. I think it used to be some sort of gift. And I was using a scratchy pen until very recently, one of these, but it's very scratchy to use. And um, I've been experimenting with actually a normal cartridge pen just dipped in this ink. And it seems to be working quite well. So, uh, right, so let me, let's do some corgis, shall we? Now, I very often, usually, start with the eyes. And then there's the nose. Ah, it's a happy corgi today. Nice big corgi ears there. And he's looking out to the left over there. Let's give him a collar, shall we? And I had to look up some pictures on Google to see to remind myself what corgis look like. Um, they're quite stout dogs, very short little legs, and nice puffy chest, quite big shoulders. And a smaller rear end, and so just sketch them out like this, give them some feet, and there we go, and Corgi. Not great, and I'll do another one sitting up, looking the other way. Whoops, I usually start with the eyes, as I said. And this one's going to be looking a little bit snooty, looking down his nose at somebody. So in this one, give him a downturn of the mouth for that expression. Collar here. Nice big corgi ears there. Little fluffy part of his head. And there we go. And then if you put in the individual toes on the paws, helps to define those as feet as opposed to just blobs. Right, so there's our outline. Okay, nothing much more to it than that, really. Okay, now, usually I clean this pen. Well, I'll do it right now, to show the complete process, to get all the ink out of it, because this, this is Indian ink, and it's got shellac in it, I believe, which means it will clog up the pen if you don't clean it out straight away. A nice, fresh, well, nearly fresh. <laughs> um, bit of water there. I'll try and keep this all in screen so that you can see what's going on. Now, luckily, I'm just using a few colours from this side of the this side of the um, tin today. Now, these are they were it's a tin of Windsor and Newton paints originally, but I've replaced most of them gradually with Sennelier, which those of you who know will know are good quality. And that's important. Okay, the ink's dried pretty quickly. Sometimes you have to get the hair dry to it. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to be using three brushes for this little demo. 
and I'll give them a quick clean because in the time it took me to prepare the camera and so on, they've all dried up. Right, I'm going to be using only about three main colours really, it's quite simple. Now they've got this lovely sort of tan brown colour, I'm going to be using yellow ochre as the base for that, then add in some uh, raw sienna, some Windsor orange and some Windsor red to that. Now let's um, mix up those colours in advance. Sorry about the messy palette, but that's how I work. So I'm going to keep one of these brushes just for water. The other one I'm going to just mix up a little light yellow ochre here. That's quite a rich saturation, but that's fine. I'm trying to remember which is which. And over here I've got a little dab of this Windsor orange, a bit of Windsor red, and this is the one I was working on previously. Raw sienna, so it's a brown, so, you know, you call it brown with a bit of nice bit of russety red in there. So a little dab of red and orange, you can make that, whoops, darken it off a little. Sorry, my tin's rattling around here, let's just move that out of the way. So there's our two colours, two main colours, I think I've got those in those brushes, and here's a a bit of water. So first of all I'm going to dab around, just make it wet. Now I'm going to leave certain areas white. I'm just going to let the water and the colour do their own thing because one of the great fun things about painting with watercolours is what they call the bleed, where paints... No, is that the light yellow ochre? No, that's the brown. There we go. That's the yellow ochre. So having made it wet, Basically, I'm just going to let the colour bleed in and do its own thing. A little bit of colour on the top of the nose there. And to leave a little bit of white. But the back end is going to be mainly that brown. So that's the base there. And while that's drying, I'll just do exactly the same to the, to the other one. A little dab of water. And I'm going to... Apply water to the areas where we're going to have colour. Where it's going to be white, such as some here, we'll leave that white. And the feet, of course, are white. I wouldn't have known that unless I'd looked up on Google previously. But there we are. So there we are, a little bit of water. Just check I've got this. Oh, draw one again. A little bit more saturated. Uh, now this is going to take a while to dry because it's quite wet. So I might... Turn the video off and pick up in a minute. There we go. That's a nice, nice effect there. Right, I'll just pause the video for a second. Okay, I paused there just to let this dry a bit and uh, nearly let it dry too. So quickly moving on, these are still wet. Um, just a little bit wet, not sure. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, so you can just see that. So before they dry out, I'm going to add the, the darker colour. And I've got to do this quickly because yeah, it has dried a bit more than I wanted to. I'll have to correct that in a minute. Okay, I was going to show you the wonderful things that watercolour do when they bleed on their own. I might have bodged this up. Anyway, let's try and finish this one before that one dries up too. Now as you can see, the colour, because it's wet, can you see that starting to, what they call, bleed? And the result of that is that you get this lovely random effect. Now, if you try to reproduce that by, say, doing it by hand, it would take a lot of time, and you probably wouldn't create such a nice effect. If you let the water do its own thing, the universe has a wonderful way of... <laughs> finding balance and doing things and uh, with watercolours you see the lovely way that the one paint has seeped into the other or bled into the other and with watercolours if you know how to use that technique then you can quite easily create some lovely effects you know little fluffy corgis so so this gives a soft edge as you can see i bodged it up a bit here uh, because i let it dry too much so i'm going to see if i can correct that just by adding back a little bit of water with this fine detail brush and 
yeah, just taking the edge off that. Although it has created an effect I quite like. Anyway, there you go. Now, I'll let that draw a little, uh, dry a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, I'll mix up another colour I'm going to be using. As you can see, the little shadowy bits. So we've got white um, pores on the little corgis here um, and a shadow on the ground. And also the little bit of substance to the eye. And I use a little murky dab of Windsor Blue here and Payne's Grey, whoops, indigo, mixed up. Very light. I don't want actual completely grey, a little bit of blue, just to give it a little bit of colour. And that gives you this sort of grey blue there. And if you just put a little bit of that into the shadows by the feet, it helps to, to, to define, of course, the darker foot, which is in the background. Oh, there's a foot missing here. I'm going to put that in with another pen quickly. There we go. There's a back foot. Right. Um, so, yeah. If you just use a little bit of shadow like that, it helps to define things. That one's got a bit messy. Now, I'm trying to do this quickly because the size of the video file is going to be eating up my hard drive. Now, just a little dab helps to create the effect of sh shine on an eyeball there. Anyway, there's our little corgis. And you've got to be careful because if you dab around too much, sometimes you can spoil what starts off as nice, simple and spontaneous. Like give a bit of shadow to that back foot there. Um, and little, there we go, a little bit of shadow onto his lip. Do a bit of nose. Don't go mad. You can just dabble around at your heart's content, really. Now, this coat here is a bit um, wishy-washy. So I'm going to find that brown again. There we go. I'm going to darken that, in, darken that up a bit. There we are. Hopefully it's still wet enough to bleed, but that'll give a bit more shape to the little animal. There we go. That's better. And the ears. Right, so I'm not going to mess around too much. I'm quite happy with that. Leave that as it is. Wash out your brushes, of course. And just to finish off, I'm going to give some shadow to the ground. Which always helps. Because you realise you're looking at a three-dimensional object. Not just a piece of pen. And ink. And there we go. There's our corgis. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, um, I'll be doing more of these video updates, so um, you know, keep in touch via the CH64 group or um, sign up for the email newsletter at www.squigglypeat.co.uk. That's S Q U I G G L Y Pete, P E T E, all one word, dot co dot UK. Thanks for watching, folks. See you soon. So here I am in my little studio here in Parkgate. And these are some of the backgrounds that are actually used in the book. Um, you probably recognize those. <coughs> right. Um, just for the last stage of this little demo, what I'm going to be doing, uh, there we are, what I'm going to be doing is taking these corgis I've already done or the technique painting from that apply it to these little people and then finally I'm going to scan it and pop it into the final page which should be quite interesting okay let's go okay um before I start I'll show you this um, <clears throat> little bookmark which I've had printed from some of my pictures um, I'm going to be running around Parkgate soon, uh, giving out a few little bits of information about this. And um, these are the bookmarks, which I'm giving away free. Um, if you'd like one or two of these, uh, please drop me a message uh, via Facebook, Messenger, whatever, on the CH64 group. Um, and also, if you just hold there a second, 
look out for this. Okay, um, because the main, you know, the big book isn't going to be done for another few weeks yet, I've come up with the idea of uh, Parkgate's Pottiest Pirates, a little sampler of some of my other work. The terrible story of Fishfinger Fred. I must tell you the little Fishfinger Fred. He was big, he was round, he was squishy. And no matter how hard he would scrub every day, Freddy's fingers would always smell fishy. He would scrub them with engine oil, butter and soap, till the ends of his fingers went red. Then he filled up a bucket with water and ice, and he poured it right over his head. Well, I won't tell you what happens to Fishfinger Fred. It's only a little short story. Um, and there's one or two of these poems in this little booklet. Uh, and this is another thing I'm going to be giving away free with the bookmark. So look out for those. Um, and as soon as Squiggly Peak, the big book, is finished, I'm going to be doing a little collection of poems uh, called Parkgate's Pottiest Pirates. So look out for that. Right, OK, so on with this little demo. Let me just get my camera sorted a second. There we go. Now I'm just going to put my little reference pictures up here, as I've done previously. So I can think about what I'm doing. Oh, I love Yellow Yoko. Now I want to leave white on the little corgi's chest as it goes, leaving I'm just going to dab some of that around. As I said, the hind quarters are darker. No, a little bit there. Right. This one could do a little bit more saturation in that. So I'm just going to dab in a little bit more yellow ochre there. Um, quite quickly. So I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. And I'm going to use my secret weapon here, which is the old hairdryer. Just hold on a second. Add a little bit of shadow, as I did for the, the other ones. Underneath them here. A little bit of Payne's Grey and Windsor Blue. Now when I do this, I've also got to keep in mind where the light's coming from in the main picture and I'm, that this is going into. And I know the light's coming from this side, so the shadows are going to be going this way, as you can see there. And while I've got that colour on the go, I'll just give Prince Charles a little bit of shadow as well. There we are. As I said, these watercolours, they're, you know, as materials go, Art materials go they're very expensive but you use so little of them you know a little flick a little dab here um, they really do last for years so if you're thinking about taking up a hobby um, I would highly recommend getting into watercolors it's very very rewarding it's not easy at first but like everything in life it's just a matter of technique once you've um, sorted out a few techniques, you can take those quite a long way. Okay, so to finish this off, I've just got to do Prince Charles's trail. A little bit of colour to his shirt there. Now, um, one of the things with this this scene is the fact that um, what I've built into the book is the passage of time, you know, the, the time of the day as it goes on. It starts off on a foggy morning, then goes through the afternoon to night. They camp overnight, get up in the morning again. And now this has progressed towards evening. So we've got the sunlight off to the, uh, the west here. Um, as many of you who live in this area know, we get some lovely sunsets in Parkgate. And I'm trying to capture that. I was walking down there. Sarah and myself were walking along one day, uh, about a, well, some, at the end of last summer, I think, a lovely summer's evening. And the light was golden on the um, on all the buildings and stuff. And it looked lovely. And I said, I must try and capture that. I must try and get that into the book. And this is the result. As you can see, we've got some lovely deep, rich yellow oak colours here. And the sunlight is reflected on everything, including the Queen's white dress. Uh, we've got it on Boris's shirt there, you see. Um, and uh, little Jack and his medal over there. And the whole ground is bathed in this sunlight. So I'm quite pleased with that effect. Now, to be consistent, I'm going to do Prince Charles in the same sort of way. I'm going to have a little bit of yellow ochre on this side, reflection from the sunlight coming from that side. And I think I'm going to give him grey trousers, because uh, he often wears a grey suit. Um, 
and I think that'll go quite nicely. It looks like a sort of odd mix of formality and informal. Uh, walking the corgis in his wellies, and his sporting his green beliefs and so on. So, okay, first I'm going to dab in the yellow ochre, just to remind myself where I'm going to use it. Add a little bit of this uh, lemon yellow, actually, just to lighten, to give it a little bit more zing. And just get this in front of his, maybe a little bit on the toes of these corgis. Not sure if that's going to work or not. I might have to take that out again later. There we go. Right, and a tiny bit on his button here, and this part of his pocket, which I'd left for this reason. There we are. And there we go. A little glint of sunlight on his shirt. Maybe even on his eyes. Yes, that works for me. And his nose. And a little bit of yellow on his nose there. That's, to me, that works quite nicely. Right, so a little bit of Payne's grey for his trousers. And here we go. And while that's still wet, it's going to bleed in some of the darker grey. Let's give it the depth. Shadows. As you can see, some of it's drying already. That's okay, you can get the effect of folds in the fabric this way. There we go, there's his trousers, just, a bit, just about complete. Uh, dabbing a tiny bit more Payne's Grey to Darken that off even more around this side where the shadows are the deepest. There we go. There's Prince Charles, all ready to go into the book. Right, next scanning. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this onto the scanner like this. Put some heavy books on top to keep it nice and flat. And we'll scan it. Okay, so over here in Photoshop, we've got the um, this is the picture so far assembled um, that we're going to be popping Prince Charles into. As we can see, we've got uh, Boris's bike over here in the corner. There's Boris the Queen. Let's just zoom in on that. There we go. She's looking a little bit curious. Boris not looking happy at all. And Lucy over here on the left, grappling with the monster. Hoover thing. Okay, so the next thing to do is to get this scanned in. So I'm just going to open up my scanner software. I've got a Canon TS5051 uh, scanner, in case you're interested. A very, very reliable little machine. I've had it for ages. Right, this was what was left last time. So if we click preview, that was when I scanned in Lucy. And there we go. There's our preview. I'm just going to turn it around like that. I'm going to reduce the scan area down a little bit. Should make it a little bit quicker. And I've got some predefined settings here which are a little bit more realistic. Bring out the colours a bit better. And scan it at 300 dpi in case you're interested. And um, there we go. It takes a second or two half a minute or so and we end up with a nice picture which I'll then show you how I'm going to take it into Photoshop right so there's our picture just going to give it a name Prince Charles and Corgis that's so I can find all the pictures quickly as you can see in this folder here I've got dozens and dozens dozens and dozens of pictures interesting there's one photograph I took of myself in the office just so that I could get the position for Squiggly Pete. Um, see up here, this one? There you go, see there he's kneeling on one knee. And I had to work out where his hands would fall and the sort of position he would be in to do that. 
so very often I do this sort of thing I'd make the gesture myself and there I am kneeling on the floor of my office about to get knighted <laughs> and anyway as you can see there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures go into this book um, lots and lots of bits and pieces everything from seagulls here very often I'll draw several at once and then pick the one I prefer to go into that picture Got the blue bicycle cafe there close up it's very very small in the finished book so you only get a little hint of what's going on there and there's a BBC news crew huh. covering the scene um, yeah lots and lots of stuff as you can see I'm thinking about doing an exhibition at some point because it'd be lovely to all these pictures spread out so that you can follow from one stage to you know you can follow the progress of the whole book there's the gesture of uh, little Jack reaching out to grab Lucy's hand when he's being pulled up into the this machine and of course I flipped him over horizontally so he's actually facing the other way but that's where that little part of the scene came from you see right anyway fascinating all this stuff sometimes I forget myself there's a little sketch I did I wanted to have a the rat hanging off the edge of the page there he is there's a little pencil sketch of course and I do the ink for that and paint it there we go and that's how it finishes up tiny little details like that there's Lucy grabbing the other side of the page there's a mouse getting sucked up the tube the on off switch it's all scanned together brought together there's a few bits and pieces little details which I forgot to draw in the first place which I've draw individually and scan them in. It's Lucy going up the ladder. Sometimes it's interesting to see the sequence of how these things are painted. And there's um, Squiggly Pete sitting atop the machine with his trusty pencil. All aboard! There we go. This is a little demo on how to paint the rats and give the transparent effect there. And back to our little picture. Okay, anyway, so back to Prince Charles. It's fascinating all this stuff, isn't it? Look, see these rats. <laughs> I must admit, I do have a lot of fun, a lot of fun drawing these. It's great fun. Right, okie doke. Now, where are we? Oh yes, um, Prince Charles. So I'm going to open this up with Photoshop. I'll show you very, very quickly, rough and ready and we get it into the picture. Right, so there he is. I won't go into the technicalities of using Photoshop for the moment because basically I'm going to do another um, episode on some of those, some of those technical details for anyone who's interested. What I'm going to do is use my little lasso tool here. Oops. And don't want that little fleck there. And I'm going to copy that, paste. I'm using keyboard shortcuts that I do day in, day out, so this is very rapid. Apologies for that, but as I said, I'll do another video on some of the technical details. Right, so I've outlined in there. I'm going to select the inverse of my selection, copy and paste again. There we are. There's Prince Charles cut out. Hey presto. Now, if we zoom in, you can see some of the little pixels around the edge of his arm there which I'll be tidying up and that's where a lot of the work goes actually but just for now we'll just pop him straight across just drag and drop him into the other one there we go whoa -ho -ho, land of the giants now so that's the full size 300 dpi scanned you see um, and very often what I do is I will label these I'm going to call that Prince Charles Orridge original lock it hide it and make a copy of that and then I've got one to go back to later when I want to tidy it up and clean it up and do it properly. Anyway but for now I'm just going to use this copy and let's in the first place shrink him down to size same sort of size of the, and there we are there he is in the background I'm looking a bit sort of forlorn right okay so basically this has turned into quite a long video, but as you can well, as you can see from the original sketch, um, I did this sketch of Prince Charles in pencil, and um, 
now there he is in real life in the flesh as it were standing behind now you see the fun thing is with photoshop i could put him anywhere i could bring him in the, into the foreground there might be nice actually so he's just hiding away in fact i kind of like that in fact i think i prefer that to the original composition although you can't see the steps of the church there you see and these are some of the details that i like to um preserve you know because you know at the end of the day one of the main things that makes this book interesting is the inclusion of all the local scenery okay anyway so there we go and one of those corgis is hidden so i'll just show you what i do with that um i will say cut him out of there paste him there he or she and there he is so basically that you know where he was hid behind Boris Johnson I can bring him out and put him there so this is the sort of thing you can do in Photoshop you see same with these I'll just basically very quickly cut those out because you might want to see more of them having having taken the trouble to paint them there's no point in hiding them away there they go maybe just behind little jack there now they're a little bit small and I've shrunk them down too far but anyway there you go and there's the finished picture My name is Squiggly Peter, and I love my fish and chips. I love that salt and vinegar, what dribbles down me lips. And when I'm out there pirating, my pencil in my hand, I draw myself whatever I need or whatever comes to hand. Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Pete. are the pirate.